record to the cloud. That way I can have it for later. All right, a couple of things that is new that happened Monday, so yesterday. So just so you know, every first, second, or third of the month, usually every first Tuesday, we will update my viewboard, okay, with new features and things like that. Uh, if you go to myviewboard.com right here, you will be able to see what's new, right? So what's new in my viewboard, what's new in my viewboard Android, and also to what's new in uh, QuickBoard, right? So if anything is new, it's going to show up right here and with the, with the release history, all right? And then we've just done the companion app too uh, as of yesterday. So one of the things we've got new features is import notebook files onto the canvas. Um, we haven't got the magic pen or creative pen that's on QuickBoard. So QuickBoard, we've got dot notebook files. So for the browser to browser, the teachers export or just have their dot notebook files, we'll be able to import those onto the QuickBoard canvas. Uh, on the Android side, little, a few little minor things, but you're not using the Android side uh, on your panels that much. For Windows, we now put a math input tool. So if you know the Windows tool for math input, I'll show you that. We've done that. Some fade uh, out an animations. So some teachers asked for some animations there. And then obviously um, we did some improvements on the icons and I'll show you that as well. So, and then some UI enhancements and things like that. So I'm gonna go into here and we'll start with the My View Board enhancements, which you're using first. So the app, as we just noticed, did a an update here. So UI design, buttons are bigger, things make more sense. Uh, the casting and the remote control buttons are much easier to navigate on the app. So if you're playing, if the teachers update, uh, I think they'll like this. One of the things I do like on the remote control side of it is it does have a page. I'll at least throw this to the board. It does have a page flip. So, uh, let's see if it'll let me throw it. Let me save the photos. So this control right here, so let me throw it. So this new look is if a teacher has a dot notebook file up on my view board. If they have a, um, um, you know, multiple pages in their canvas, gosh, we've got forward and back buttons on their phone. So they don't, they can roam around the room and they can use their mobile device and the app to actually move forward a slide or back a slide if they want to, right? So they don't have to be stage front all the time. So we made the buttons a little bigger and everything looks a little better. The same thing with casting. There's casting controls for the teacher on the mobile app. So if you're allowing students with their Windows devices to actually line up and cast, you know, here. So let me, let me start it up. So if I have somebody waiting to present or I'm presenting to somebody through the casting icon down here at the bottom, this guy, I can, um, choose who I want to be on the screen just from my phone. So I don't have to be at the front of the board to choose who I want to be on the screen at any, any given time. And I can choose which student I want to be full screen casting or sharing their project. So the mobile app ties in really well with the uh, uh, viewboard canvas. All right. The other thing that, that you know that they talked about in the updates is the file and folder management. So I have a pretty big Google Drive, so it's going to go here. If I want to, I can show a detailed view with dates and timestamps and a little bit better wording. So if I wanted to bring, you know, this out onto the canvas, it's easier for me to do it. It'll download it. So I have two views. I have a large icon view or a thumbnail view, and then I have a detailed view now. So that's, that's now um, available. The other thing that they've done on my view board, um, just small tweaks, has been here. So this icon right here with the finger on the toolbar, if I tap that or drag it out, I 
Come on. There we go. There's the math tool. All right, took a second. All right, so math tool. Now I've got my input panel. So obviously, if we're three time three, and if you don't like it, it's like anything like Microsoft, you can tell it what it is, and then you can insert the formula onto the, the panel if you want to, right? So then you can write it out. So it has a formula um, input recognition from Microsoft built in now. So math teachers have been asking, how do I put formulas out there? They can leverage this if they've used OneNote. So it's built into the panel now. A couple other things that we've got, obviously the notebook files, the flip chart. This one was the most unique. Um, you've seen the AI pen where we're able to draw, like a, you know, I can draw, you know, a snail. I like doing this one. Should find it. Here we go. We're going to bring that guy out onto the canvas. So a couple of things that we've done now is if they want to continue to use this image here and make it look more like a snail, we can change the line color or change the line size. I can change the color of the line to be more of that. I even now have fill textures. So I can say I want to fill. I'm going to go dark brown on the shell and then I can change this to a lighter shade there. So I can now individually fill and draw things and make things a little bit more dynamic. So they've added a fill tool built into it that we didn't have before. Do the background if you're not careful. So the other one is Let's see. Obviously, some of the bigger ones that teachers will use is the duplication tool. Mm -hmm. We've made that a little better. So icons not in the middle, so you can duplicate a lot faster. We've also implemented the fader tool. So I can set a timer on the fade. So if I'm in presentation mode, and it should click and I can fade it out. So if they want to create things, you know, hiding icons behind, you know, put put boxes over words or text, then they can go in here and say, okay, students, what is this? That's a snail, correct. They can tap on it. It'll fade away and they can have the word behind it. So there's a lot of neat things they can start doing now with the, uh, the, the fader tools. Handwriting recognition didn't change. Uh, pen tools all remain the same, you know, the infinite color palette on that. Um, but nothing really changed too much except for some UI improvements. So uh, the other thing that I would say that's pretty nice on this now is, let me go to a new page. I do, I, this became much easier to use, which is the chart. So if they want to combine cells, We can do that now, so we can take those cells and merge them into one. So they can do charts and drop things and objects inside those charts. So if I want to go back here, let me copy this guy. I'm going to copy him, go over here to, and paste it. I can take him now and drop it right in there and it'll fit. I'm going to make it smaller so it fits a little better. So if I drop him in that spot, notice how it automatically reorganizes the cells. So pretty neat stuff if, if we want to have teachers have a little fun with charts and they can put documents and things out there to the side. So the biggest improvement though, Josh, has come right over here is QuickBoard. If you guys aren't using it, I highly recommend showing this because this is where you get the browser to browser uh, configuration. So. If you go to myviewboard.com, go ahead and log into this. So go to myviewboard.com and type in the C71BAE. Okay. So where do I type that in, J Mr. Webster? So if you go back, 
let me move this guy down. So if you go back to uh, my view board, there'll uh -huh. be a little icon that looks like it'll be this one that looks like a computer, the last one. Okay. I'm there. Right. All right. So click on that. And then if you type in the C71BAE and your name, So Nick is in, and then if you need me to put the code back up, I will. Yeah, I guess I messed the code up. C seventy one B A D. I'm getting a quick board doesn't exist. C seventy one B is in boy. Yep. Eight Edward. Yep. Yep, doesn't exist. Huh. Don't know. Here, let me do this. Click on that link in the Zoom chat and see if that'll, that'll get you in. Just use a good guess. Oh, no. Let me see. Login code. See, that looks different than what I had before. It's telling me to wait for the host now. I got Nick in. Huh. Maybe Let's start another one. Give me a second. I'm just going to refresh the thing. Is it possible since I'm in a different entity or something? Should not matter. Okay. Okay. Try try that link again. I just cleared the cache on it. Okay. Should I choose student or guest? Guest. Okay. Nick, if you don't, if you don't, there we go. All right. So both of you are in now, right? So you see my dashboard. So what I see is a, what, what the changes are is we cleaned up the list side, Josh. The other thing that we're going to do is if since you're not, since I've got a, a, a red triangle on you that shows you're not paying attention, the next update is going to have anybody with a red triangle moves to the top of the screen. So the teacher doesn't have to scroll down. So if you have 25 kids there, it's going to be difficult to know who's paying attention or not. So same thing, we've got to enable all button, right? So everybody gets pen tools and can write. I can hide that if I want to. I can hide, I'm going to apply this to all pages, do a lighter background. So I have all my basic pen tools that I had before. AI pen included on the student and on the teacher side so the students can draw with their touchscreen devices if they have it. The, the new thing that we've got in here now is the ability to import a PDF or an IWB file. You can also open uh, on the canvas, you can now open a uh, dot notebook file. So teachers will be able to open a dot notebook file and share this to every student's device. So if every student is on this right here, is, is, is got the my quick board running on their device, then they'll be able to see what the teacher is doing either on the board or on their device as they walk around. Hmm. Right. So it just now takes the board and makes it where as you can see that I'm writing right now and it's showing up on your end. Yep. So you have pen tools. You can write back to me if you want to. Right. So there's Nick, and there's Josh, right? So, and if you get disruptive, I can take away the pen tools and they go away. So you don't have them anymore. Two and one. Right, so it's, it's, it's a pretty neat setup there. Uh, the other thing that we have now, you'll see here, and I'm gonna go back to Windows and show you one other thing that's a subscription service in a second. Um, do we have the, so toolbars there, Gamification's coming with the classroom side of thing, and I'll talk about that in a second. Obviously, the image search, we have that. 
So, you know, so we've got frogs, not necessarily probably the best frog image right there, but obviously we can search images and drop it down on the, uh, on the, on the canvas. All right. So same thing with YouTube videos, you can drag and drop those onto the canvas, but now we have the QR share built into, um, the software, the quick board software. So what this allows a student to do, whatever the teacher's done on the browser to browser whiteboard, they can now scan the QR code with their phone and download a PDF to their mobile device. It also creates inside of there a QR code inside of their, their, their default drive. In this case, it's Google. Um, it'll create a code or a, or a shareable link that they can drop into their LMS and share that day's session with the students. That's pretty awesome. So that's built in now. So we keep it super simple. Uh, the tools are clean. You can bring in a, a, a dot notebook file or a flip chart file now or an IWB into the canvas. So it's just there for the teachers to write and for the students to collaborate back and forth. The last thing on this that I'll show is the huddle function. So what I, what I will show you is I can say I want two huddles, okay? So Nick and Josh, you are in your both separate huddles. So down here at the bottom, if I go ahead and hit the huddle button, so notice I've got a one and a two over here. Let me change the background so you can see what that looks like. If I add this, right? So I've got four images of the same. So it basically it quadded up the screen. If I were to do 25, I would get 25 of these, right? So if I change this to eight, see how I get eight different images? That could be eight different huddles, but I've only got you and one and two, all right? So I'm gonna enable the pen tools again. So if, if Josh and Nick, if you'll start writing on the screen, I'm gonna show you what this does. Okay, so you're right there. So I see you guys writing. If I want to focus just on Josh, I can hit the one button over here and I can bring that front and center and talk about it on the IFT. Can you put multiple kids about in what one group huddle, do, do what? Yeah, I can. Is the huddle I option like if we had like groups of five throughout the room, that's what you could do? Yes. And if I wanted to, I can drop Nick into huddle two. So I can move kids around and go, all right, Nick, now you're there. Josh, I'm moving you to huddle two. So I've just I've just changed you up. Cool. On the fly. Yeah. So what do you think? That's pretty great. Yeah. I, I like to be able to have kids look at a project and talk about it. They can present it and the teacher can go, you know what? All right, let's look at let's look at Josh now. He's in huddle two. Group present what you just, you know, came up with. And so you can have your images, your text student can stand up or the group leader can stand up and present same thing with one they could do that you know and I can bring them all to the front you know all of them up there people really got like that. yeah but it's simple they work on one page you just have them work on one page mm -hmm. so it's a great way to to promote its exploration and things like that so Lots of fun things there. I can see all the students at a, at a glance if I want to and say, I'm going to take away the pen tools, disable all. So all the pen tools are gone. If I want to enable all, disable all, they're all, you know, they're gone. Or I can just give one, one group pen tools and the other not pen tools. So neat stuff there with the huddle aspect of it. All right. So, that's what we've done with the quick board. That's the latest updates that's happened. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, let's go back to my view board here for a second. So I'm going to here. So you're going to see another one that loads up. You guys are windows, if I'm not mistaken, correct? It's Office all Microsoft. Yeah. It's all Microsoft. Okay. If for some reason y'all decide to go Google and Google classroom at some point, you will see this one, Josh. You as a super admin can turn this off, and this is my Viewboard Classroom. What my Viewboard Classroom is gonna give long-term is the ability to tie into Google Classroom so you can schedule lessons, so a teacher can build lessons out. 
they can they can schedule what they want to do. The students can log in and actually see those lessons and 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 work on them at home. But the biggest thing that we've got coming is what we call activities. And activities is where a teacher can create custom games for students to do either at home or at their desk. So, you know, our competitors have all been I've got this, I've got that, I can do gaming, I can do this. Great, but you can only get so many kids up at the board at one time. And to, if you're going to promote digital, you know, learning, if you're going to promote discovery, you know, and a kid's got to wait to their turn to go to the board, uh, you might lose them. So what we've done is the teacher can create that game, create that activity, and they can do it at their device that you've issued. So... A lot of things coming with the platform. And all this right here that you've seen is still free. We're not going to charge for it. It's still free. That's great. So let me show you what we are going to start charging for. So I'm going to go back out here to my view board. So everything with my view board obviously still works and is still free. So if I go to a new page in the browser, you're going to see things like now this. My view board clips. All right. What ViewSonic has decided to do is because YouTube still throws up suggested videos after you watch them. Some of those suggested videos may not be appropriate, right? What I what I what we decided to do is partner with a company called Bow Clips. Bow Clips has two million curated videos by subject built into it. So if I, if I, I was doing, uh, here, let me pull this up. So I'm going to open up a presentation that I did. So I don't want to save this one. My Google Drive. I was creating this one at a show one day. So this is my sharks with no teeth, right? So everybody was kind of wondering what, what's going on with this video. So, you know, I've got... A particular shark up here I did a my view board clips and if you notice so that's a basking shark if you notice that there's no ads running on that it is a short video clip that gets the students you know kind of like oh that's what that is right so I can move all this around and bring these videos in to enhance my lesson notice I didn't have to go search for them once I dragged them onto the canvas they're there now, the way this works is it is a um, uh, concurrent license, so we sell it in groups of 20, and it's 1000 a year. So you can have, if you, if you have a school, and this is what we've kind of determined, if you have a school, you're not going to have 20 people using the, the, the videos at a time. You're not going to have 20 people at one time. So 20 gets most school districts, they get them covered. So as long as you don't have more than 20 leveraging the videos at one time or playing the videos at one time, that's all you have to, that's all you need. It's like Netflix. User interface is going to update in September and we're going to launch in September. But when we go to search, if I go in here, let me uh, type in. So the search is going to change to be more YouTube like. Not YouTube, but Netflix like. So So right now it's a little clue. You have to search it up there and hit search again. Um, and notice what happens here is it gives me videos curated, ready to go. So it didn't find what I'm looking for, but if I wanted to use this one right here, I could hit that clip, it drops it right onto the canvas, and then I can bring that out and play it for the students so they can see what I'm talking about. Not a full video, but you can find longer video clips if you want to. They're all curated from Smithsonian, BBC, Nat Geo, um, copyrighted YouTube material with no ads. So it's all, it's all built in and searchable. What are your thoughts on that? It's nice. 
I mean, people will still be able to use YouTube, though, but they, they will have to deal with the ads and everything there. Is that right? Absolutely, yeah. So we have districts that don't want to deal with the ads, so they're, they're moving to this. So you can start playing with it right now. They're, the company is called Bow Clips. Um, they have trials that you can take a look at to see what kind of videos are out there. So you can have a you know, kind of teacher give you, hey, what's the, what's the go with it? Uh, the big thing with ViewSonic is we have obviously the exclusive on it, but we can again embed it all within the My Viewboard ecosystem, and it's a lot cheaper the way we package it than the way they package it. Sure. So, just something to think about. I got a couple questions too, Jason. Before you go today, I okay. don't know how much time you have for us here, but uh, I wanted to ask a couple questions uh, that that have come up to us. Um, first, I, I, I logged into my view board the other day and uh, actually today as well. And if I go into my entity management area in my user management section, there's only one page of users there where in June there were 15 pages of users. Do you know? Okay. What happened there? I, I, that I don't know. And I would have to get you in touch with Ramel uh, Bougay. Okay. And I can start that. I can start that email thread, Nick. If you want to start the email thread with Josh and Ramel, um, that way we can have Ramel call you and, and tell you what's going on. Okay. I, I, I hesitated. I already created another CSV import file to upload there to get all of our pe people back within the entity, but I didn't want to do that until I talked to somebody. Um, no, Ramel. Ramel. Ramel can. Ramel could probably tell you what's going on right away because he's he's our resident expert on that and let me ask you this too jason this is coming from our resident uh, group policy um, program pusher we've had some issues uh, pushing out this software to our users um, because what, what's basically happening is there's so many updates to the software by the time we get one version out we have to get another version out and to removing the old software and installing the new software is there a possibility that you can pass the word up the chain that um, maybe once the, the software is installed that updates don't require an admin right. I don't know what the, the answer is, but um, it's good. I'll talk to Ramel about that. I think that's something on your end that you can allow the, the, the teachers just allow the updates to happen automatically once it's pushed. Okay. You should only have to push it once and then they should be able to go up here into the um, information and be able to update it there. But again, you have to give them admin rights to be able to, yeah. to um, execute the update. Huh? We're not willing to give them admin rights. That's I think you can do I think you can do it for just one software package though, I thought. Maybe. That's a possibility. I, I I think I think in your policies you can say my V board gets the update. Okay. Well, uh, you say Ramel might be able to help. That's great. Um, yes. You were mentioning it briefly. I spoke to you uh, a couple months back about the new boards coming out this year. We intend on purchasing another 30 to 50 boards, I assume. So can you give us an update on what the new boards are going to come looking like? Yeah. So the new boards are going to look like the old boards. They're just going to have, they're going to be thinner, lighter, um, which by the way, thank you for the mount issue with the lock screw we we've got the new ones in that shouldn't have that problem anymore right um but but the new boards will be able to use two pins one thin one thick so you can have two different colors going at one time so i've got uh i've got a thin tip here and it's writing in red let me change my color here so you can see it and i've got that's red the brown so i've got thick so if you notice i can have two different types Cool. If you hold now, you can change the color. You know, if I want to change that to, I don't know why that didn't change, but anyway, you've got two different style pins to, to, to work with. So that's the new thing. Uh, one other thing I'll tell you to look for for the teachers. So the, like I said, the boards, there's not much. The only other thing that they did was the USB ports on the front now follow the input. So I know that you use your own PC or the teacher connects their PC. So mm -hmm. if they connect a the thumb drive to the front USB ports, we have a true USB hub now. 
So that, that will follow whatever input you're on. That's great. Yep. Uh, faster Android 2 on there. And then the other thing that's coming um, that you'll need to know about, and we'll talk about it, is when you get to My View Board again. So when you're in your account, uh, Josh, you're going to be able to, on your old boards and your new boards, be able to globally turn them on, turn them off, and manage the, the, the firmware updates to the panel. So there will be a freemium because you're a uh, – uh, there'll be a – if we want to do more scheduling, we'll charge for that. But basic, basic on, off, globally, uh, grouped by school, you'll be able to control those panels, and you'll be able to push the over-the-air update at your scheduled times versus all of a sudden the teacher turns on and says, hey, I got an update. I need to, I need to download that. Uh, you won't have that anymore. Uh, you'll be able to control it right here on your My View Board Entity page. Great. So it'll be, it'll be very easy to use icons. So that's coming as well. But the freemium should cover what most school districts want to do uh, with that. So the next one, um, the wiki page. Teacher gets hung up. If they hit the settings wheel up here at the top and go to the question mark, we do have a My View Board Wiki, which will help them with some of the basic functionality of the panel. Okay? That's great. So that's new. It's constantly being updated. So if they want to know how to do something, it's there. We also have on that same section here some get started pieces. So I can go into basic and say, okay, I want to know how to change my backgrounds. If I click on that, it should have gone to YouTube. Oh, there it is. It was being hidden. So if I, I can do that, it'll go straight to our YouTube channel and play it. That's great. Right? So built-in stuff. Sorry, I, I just loaded it up here. Uh, let me try that again. Help button. And let's say changing backgrounds, and there we go. What I intend on doing next Tuesday, Jason, is similar to what we did in er early June, is I set up a dozen of these boards with computers attached to them. Uh, teachers had the opportunity to come in and, gr and group themselves by their own ability level, um, and, okay. and I was there to support them along the way. but. The one thing we always hear from our teachers is, well, we, we never have enough time just to sit down and play with this to, to figure these things out. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably share this video resource and those resources for the wiki page and the videos with them and then kind of turn them loose to do some things. And I'll obviously show them the new features in my view board that you've showed me today. But uh, the, the almost the best thing that could happen is that teachers teach themselves or teach their colleagues something that they didn't know because a lot of these people are still just using these boards for for annotation a projector just fine yes but we're trying to get to that next step yes so again I'll tell you take into that help section and show them where all the resources are when they've got a question it should offload a lot of things on you Josh yeah I saw something on here that I thought was interesting which was open source lessons. Yeah. So I will, I will tell you, we are starting a community here where we will start having um, my view board lessons that people can share. And I saw it. View board files, sample view board files. So if there are certain things you want to see, um, fractions and circles, you can have them download that to the panel. See if it'll download. You may have to download it on a regular browser, but if they go to my V board wiki and download that V board file, then um, it will it will download to the panel and then they can open it up and play with it. Sure. So we're working on it. Trying to make it a little bit better, a little bit easier for teachers. Anything else for me? Hey, one easy question coming from me here, Ben. What's uh, any idea what the Tools for Schools pricing is going to be on the contract this year? 